The chance that a person will suffer some sort of brain injury during their lifetime is high, whether it's a child at a hockey rink, a person in a car accident, or a senior suffering a stroke. This year alone, one and a half million North Americans will sustain some form of traumatic brain injury from a concussion to a severe brain trauma and over a million people will suffer a stroke. Many of these patients will suffer life-altering consequences. In order to make accurate diagnoses and prescribe the most appropriate treatments and therapies for these patients, clinicians must be able to assess the nature and severity of neurological impairment. The first challenge is assessment. We need to first understand the nature and extent of their neurologic impairment so that uh, we can then provide accurate diagnosis and further develop treatment plans and rehabilitation. We're all familiar with how far technology has come in terms of being able to look at the structure of the brain. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, enables clinicians to see structural abnormalities. This helps them assess the location of injuries or damage to the brain. Unfortunately, they don't give us a, a great idea of how that person will function in day-to-day -day life. So how do clinicians assess brain injury? Touch my finger, then touch your nose, back and forth, like so. Typically, when we're assessing these patients, we look at their reflexes, we examine their muscle strength, their muscle tone, we do rudimentary tests of coordination, as well as examining sensation. The problem with the existing tests are that they're inherently subjective, that they're qualitative, they're based on coarse ordinal scales which have floor and ceiling effects and are relatively insensitive to change. Then up to your ear. What we really need is an approach which is objective, precise and sensitive to change to really get the answers that we want. The tools today are very qualitative and subjective, which makes it more difficult uh, to optimize a patient's treatment plan. That's about to change. For over a decade, respected researchers from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario in Canada have been developing and testing an advanced robotic technology that objectively quantifies the nature and severity of neurological dysfunction. It's called the KinArm, and it's created by Beacon Technologies. We developed the KinArm robot for basic research to study human motor performance. The strength of this technology lies in its ability to quantify sensory motor function. This makes it ideal to study dysfunction in a clinical setting. The result is the next generation technology for clinical assessment of neurological disorders. This stroke patient is about to undergo an assessment. In the clinic, the patient is transferred to the KinArm. The robot is adjusted to fit the patient, the patient is wheeled up to the workstation and is then asked to perform a broad range of behavioral tasks. Here is an example of how the kin arm can be used to quantify sensory function of the limb with a simple matching task. In this task, the robot moves the right arm. The individual is required to move their left arm to the mirror position without being able to see their arms. The ellipses show that the healthy individual is able to accurately match the mirror position of their right arm. They do this on a consistent basis across repeated trials. In this example, we have a patient with a stroke performing the same matching task. Again, the robot moves the right arm, but this time the patient is unable to accurately match the mirror position of their right arm. As the ellipses show, there is a large degree of variability across repeated trials in where the patient thinks their right arm is positioned. The data produced by the system enables researchers and clinicians to score the amount of variability across repeated trials, the area of the workspace used by the patient, and any shift in the patient's workspace. Here is a different example in which the kin arm can be used to quantify reaching to visual targets. During this task, the individual is instructed to reach to targets as they appear. We can see relatively straight hand paths for this healthy individual with little variability across repeated trials. Now we have a patient with a stroke perform the same reaching task. 
the patient's initial movements are slow, fall short of the target, and require many corrective movements to finally reach the target. We can also see lots of variability across repeated trials. The data produced by the system enables researchers and clinicians to score features of performance, such as reaction time, movement duration, hand path length, the number of corrective movements, and much more. A strength of the kin arm is the ability to compare performance between limbs. Can you see the difference? The difference in reaction times between the left and right arms is significantly larger than observed in healthy individuals. This difference illustrates the presence of a neurological impairment that cannot be identified by traditional clinical assessment tools. Ultimately, we hope that data such as this will give us more insight into the patient's function and allow us to develop better rehabilitation strategies. Over the last several years, the kin arm has been in use at Providence Care St. Mary's of the Lake Hospital site in Kingston. It has been used to quantify sensory motor impairments in patients with a stroke and track their recovery following therapy. Other kin arms are being used in leading hospitals and universities throughout North America, including the Kennedy Krieger Institute at Johns Hopkins University, Brown University, and the University of Chicago. Our ultimate vision is to help clinicians improve their diagnosis of the patient's sensory, motor, and cognitive deficits, improve their prognosis and strategies for therapy, identify when a patient is going to respond to a given therapy and when they won't, and finally to identify new customized strategies of therapy for the unique challenges that each patient faces. Through objective assessment, we can maximize the recovery of these patients from their neurological disorders. Our aging population, coupled with better survival rates, has increased the demand for healthcare services significantly. In particular, the World Health Organization recently reported there is much evidence to suggest that the world is ill-equipped to cope with the dramatic increase in disabilities arising from brain injuries. A streamlined and objective assessment process is essential for efficiently treating and managing the care of these patients. We believe that the kin arm is the next generation technology that will fill this need. Capable of rapidly quantifying a broad range of sensory, motor, and cognitive functions, the kin arm gives doctors the tools to effectively perform a physical checkup of the brain.